Can I get a Hoya? No way. <laughs> Why not? Come on. Let's go. Let's get the vibes going today. Come on. On the count of three. Count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And welcome back to another episode of the Funny Business Podcast, everybody. Um, you know, just gotta set you gotta set the mood right for the podcast. And what's better than a good oh yeah? What kind of mood is that? I don't know. It gets the people going. It's a oh yeah mood. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a wild episode. You never know what's going to happen on the okay. on the uh, Funny Business Podcast here. I um, hope everyone's having a great week. Um, we're looking forward to the weekend. We are another weekend closer to Christmas. Two weeks, uh, no, one week away. That's insane to think about. Absolutely insane. Um, as we are recording this early, very early in this week. Um, you know, things pop up, but we, we're not going to not put out an episode. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to put an episode out. Mike, how are you doing so far today? I'm feeling fantabulous. It, it was nice. We finally came to an agreement of recording an episode. Mm -hmm. uh, we have gone 87 weeks without skipping a beat every week. Uh, that's the dedication that you can bring on. Uh, I do have to say we are certified shit to listen to. Uh, not in the sense we are shit, but it's just random shit to listen to. Because uh, I was at a Christmas party this past weekend, uh, and I was enjoying some conversation with one of Jenna's cousins. Uh, and she's like, you need to show me where to follow this podcast because I need shit to listen to. So, uh, Katie, if you're listening to this, thank you for being the shit to listen to, which is us. So, <laughs> I, You know, that's a pretty good compliment. I'll take it. <laughs> we, we, we are things to listen to, but more specifically, we are shit to listen to. So, <laughs> Not totally wrong. But let me tell you, we do listen. We listen Luell. We're not shit to listen to. See that? Could have gone a totally different way if it was that way. But we, Matt and I are very good listeners when it comes to talking to people, as we both are and <laughs> listening to each other rambling on about random crap. I'm lost. I don't know <laughs> where that sentence went, and I, I can't find the end of it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, Matt. Uh, but yeah, so welcome to another episode, everybody. We are just getting closer to the holidays, all day holidays. Uh, speaking of days, Matt, uh, a little bit of a days in the show notes this week. Uh, mm -hmm. You're probably going to be so excited to hear what types of topics I got coming up. Uh, Matt, you and I have quoted this very often, um, especially when we talk about Stephen A. Smith's comments. But one of the things are, stay off the weed. Uh. And Matt, yes. I have two topics talking about cannabis. A little, oh. A little uh, kush kush. Um, yeah. So Matt. This is how. Do you know the capital of Thailand is? No. Bangkok. Uh, that's, <laughs> back in the day, you said somebody. <laughs> oh, so I can't do an oh yeah, but you can make that joke? That's okay. <laughs> I'm the mature one here. No. <laughs> uh, but Matt. Coffee mug. Ew. Yep. There's hair in it? Why is there hair? It was on like the edge. It looked like a like a, a sweater hair. Like a uh -huh. sweater, like a piece of fur. Sheesh. Uh anyway, Matt, we're gonna travel all the way to Bangkok. Uh one of Thailand's major fast food chains has been promoting its quote crazy happy pizza this month, an under the radar pro product topped with cannabis leaf. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting. I never would have thought cannabis and pizza would really well eat the pizza after you have some cannabis <laughs> but together at the same time is a bizarre combination so let me go into this whole crazy happy pizza it's a mashup of toppings evoking flavors of thailand's famous tom young guy soup along with a deep fried cannabis leaf on top Cannabis is also infused into the cheese crust, and there's chopped cannabis in the dipping sauce. A nine-inch pie costs 499 baht, uh, 15 bucks. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> uh, customers preferring a do-it-yourself variety can choose their own toppings with a $100 baht uh, or $3 surcharge for th two or three cannabis leaves. Uh, Matt, here's the little crazy thing about this. Uh, this obviously won't get you high. Uh, it's just a marketing campaign, and you can taste the cannabis, and then if you have enough, you may get a little bit sleepy. Uh, I've never had cannabis before, so I don't know those side effects, but uh, pretty interesting marketing campaign. I'm intrigued by the... Not intrigued, like I would... Well, I am intrigued by the deep-fried cannabis leaf. That's I didn't even know cannabis had a leaf. It's... 
you never knew cannabis was the leaf? I, I didn't know you could, like, use the leaf. I thought it was just, like, I, don't, I didn't really know what I thought. Yeah. Between but, it, fair. but anyway, Matt, here's the weird part about this whole thing in Bangkok. Okay. Recreational marijuana is still illegal in Thailand. Well, um, yeah, that's tough. <laughs> um, but if it doesn't get you high, then I guess you're okay. Ah, uh, you know... But, but is it legal to even grow it? Looking at the statute of limitations here, Matt, uh, in Thailand, you can earn a fine and even jail time. Uh, even though drug laws have been liberalized in the past few years, cannabis is regulated for medicinal use, and individuals are allowed to grow a small number of plants for their own consumption. Uh, Thailand, last December, became the first country in Southeast Asia to remove specific, specific parts and extracts of cannabis from its controlled narcotics list. Um, you cannot exceed a 0.2% total weight uh, with the, quote, CBD product. The pizza is under that 0.2% of that CBD uh, total weight. Wow. That is crazy. It's kind of cool. Like, I mean... That's a, it's a very unique, like, you can't get that pizza probably anywhere else in the world. So that's a very big attraction. Um, would I personally get it? Probably not. Uh, but it's, it's definitely cool, and I can understand why people want to try it. Have you ever been to Mod Pizza before, Matt? I <laughs> love <sick>. Mod Pizza. <laughs> uh, we, we were talking about what types of toppings we could put on. Matt, let's just, just quickly, what do you think are, would be some unique toppings to put on top of a pizza? Um, that's a, that's a, that's a tough one. That is a stumper. Scallops. Ooh, that actually wouldn't be bad. Unique one. Maybe like that a seafood a pizza. I, I've seen like shrimp before. I've never seen scallops. Um, snail. Potato chips. Potato chips is a good one. Um, a Doritos Locos taco. Oh. From Taco Bell. Yeah. That sounds good. Uh-huh. Right. What about yeah. Moe's queso as the cheese? Ooh, as the cheese. That's, yes. <laughs> that's a genius idea. Yeah. Moe's, hit me up. You heard that right. right. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, a Twinkie. Ugh. I don't Maybe. know why I just got like the shivers. Oh, it would not be good, it. but are you saying you wouldn't try a piece of pizza with a Twinkie on it? I never actually, I think, I don't think I've ever had a Twinkie ever. I don't know if I have either, to be honest. <laughs> Better try it. So what? Yeah. Better try it. Uh, maybe like Skittles or like Twizzlers. Yeah, something like like Reese's Cups. But that'd be kind yeah. of like a dessert pizza. Right. Do you ever see those dessert pizzas? Yeah, I've never had one. They, honestly, I think it'd be too sweet. I don't think I would enjoy it. Like, I think I, I would like a bite, but I wouldn't like a whole slice. I was, uh, you know... Back in the day when I used to lot, watch a lot of pizza videos and a bunch of videos mm -hmm. on YouTube, um, I will say that I found uh, the world's most expensive pizza. Oh? Take a guess how much the world's most expensive pizza is. $500. Higher. $1,000. Way higher. $10,000. Uh. The Louis the Thirteenth pizza, which is in Salerno, uh, is twelve thousand dollars. Oh my god! It why takes over seventy two hours to make this pizza. Well, we're just jumping into a hot, hot separate, separate topic here. Uh, let's see here. When you order the pizza, a pizza chef, a sommelier, and exclusive limited edition cutlery and plates arrive at your home in Italy to prepare for the pie. The pizza is topped with three types of caviar, organic buffalo mozzarella, and seven other cheese varieties. Australian pink salt from the Murray River, prawns from Salento, mantis shrimp, and lobster. Uh, and a bottle of vintage 1995 Krug Close du Menzel champagne uh, are your accompaniments. Uh, for $12,000, you better get ready for a godlike pizza. I wonder who's ever had this. I hope no one. No one should yeah. ever pay $12,000 for a pizza. Shouldn't I happen. know, man. That sounds... I mean, I wouldn't pay $12,000, but you know how much I love pizza, man. Oh, I'm sure it's amazing. 
just not worth twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> um, you know what, what another weird topping would be? Keep what? really healthy, like vitamins. <laughs> what about those gummy bears? Those Flintstone gummy bears you used to have as a kid? Oh, they were the best. The absolute best. <laughs> yeah, just put like gummy, gummy bears. Put like gummy vitamins on it. <laughs> healthy. I mean, the melting would be kind of weird. Like if you actually, actually had I might it make a the... pizza that puts melatonin gummies on it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go to sleep. Why not? Oh man. So Matt, this marketing plan is just for the hopes get people more aware about CBD uh, in Bangkok. Uh, it's it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, and uh, Matt, if we're ever in Thailand, we should go to this place. Sure. <laughs> yeah, because we totally plan on doing an episode in Thailand. Oh. <laughs> All of our Thailand viewers out there, if you really right. are, I mean, we haven't t- taken a look. We at We have some from Australia. We do have some from Australia. Good uh, I, I was gonna say I was not gonna try to have an Australian accent. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, moving on to the second one, part two of "Stay Off the Weed." Matt, we're moving over into brownies. Oh, Matt, pop brownies to be specific. Hmm? But Matt, this pot brownie is 850 pounds. Whoa. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> yep. A pot brownie made this week in Norworld, Massachusetts is bringing new meaning to the term, quote, getting baked. That's because the dank dessert treat is an 850 <laughs> pound monster measuring three feet wide. Uh, well, sorry. Yeah, three feet wide. Three feet long and 15 inches high, and it contains more than 20,000 milligrams of THC, which I'm assuming that's cannabis. If, if that's that, that is part. that's that's the part of the marijuana that gets you high, yes, yes. Um, what, what, like, I don't, I have a few questions. Number one, <laughs> can you even eat it? Because how high will you get? Oh. Like, Dude, that you're seems be dangerous space. to make. <laughs> Number two, if you can't eat it, what do you do with an 850-pound pot brownie? Number three, how long did it take to make this pot brownie? Well, Matt, I got all those answers for you. So oh, Wonderful. Here's the why. The massive uh-huh. brownie was created in Mary Med, a multi-state cannabis operator, to celebrate National Brownie Day on December 8th and to promote the company's new brand, Bubby's Baked. Uh, besides the cannabis, the behemoth brownie also contains, here's the numbers here, 1,344 eggs, 250 pounds of sugar, 212 pounds of butter, 81 pounds of flour, and 122 pounds of cocoa powder, among other ingredients. A team of five cannabis confectioners needed 24 hours to make the brownie. Uh, they said one of the hardest parts was stabilizing the brownie. We built a pallet and some supports to fortify the table it sat on to ensure the 850 brownie, 850 pound brownie was safe. Uh, go ahead. How, how do you bake it? Uh, really big oven. That's <laughs> it's gotta be like a wood fired one, like one of those pizza ones that get to beat the the pizza carriers. It kind of uh, you have to use one of those. So. The spokesperson Ryan Crandell from Mary Med said the Potts Brownies THC content is equivalent to 4,000 of the company's normal size brownies, which contain what? five milligrams each. Oh my God. <laughs> the, plan, the plan for this brownie is to sell the giant brownie to a medical marijuana patient in Massachusetts. Oh. Uh, well, how much is that going to cost? Uh, not sure, but the 20,000 milligrams of THC in the brownie actually falls within the max allowed for a medical patient in the state. <laughs> what? <laughs> How? <laughs> what did they say? It's like eating 4,000 brownies? Uh, yeah, I want to do 20,000 milligrams. I don't even think you're supposed to eat like two three. I, think I, I don't, I'm not a drug guy, but I don't think you're supposed to eat more than like two brownies. So... Obviously, with the metric system, we really don't know what we're talking about. Nope, Matt, correct. converted into pounds, it's 0. 0.044 pounds. What is? 
Uh, the 2,000 milligrams. Wow. Uh, actually, I think I put an extra, yeah, zero. So it's 0. 0.0044 pounds. But I'm pretty sure, again, I don't do marijuana. Um, but I'm <laughs> pretty sure like a weeds. regular, right, I don't, I don't do the weed. But I'm pretty sure that like a regular pop around you're not supposed to eat more than like two. And these people put like how many into one giant brownie? How do you eat this? I'd love to tell you, Matt, but I also am off the weeds, so I, I don't know. Um, but they, uh, it is larger uh, than quote the current record holder for the world's largest brownie at two hundred forty three pounds. Um, but Guinness World Records nice. apparently isn't that high on including it in the future books. Uh, I think that's nice. bullshit. I think nice they need to include right it. <laughs> they need to include it. They made it bigger than the largest brownie. You don't even they have just to make say. it bigger. They, yeah. they, they made it like four times as big, which is awesome. Like, yeah, yes, it has weed in it. It's still an 850 pound brownie. Like, that's pretty freaking cool. I want to see what would be the closest animal. Like, to give, give our viewers a tiger shark weighs about 850 pounds at the wow. lowest. That's frightening. Uh, an American bison also weighs about 800 pounds. A moose weighs about that much, too. Hmm. So, give you a little reference. I mean, it's, it's a neat idea. It's just, if they actually want people to eat it, I, I'm just very concerned. Because, like, how do you even know, like, where, how much to eat? Like, you obviously can't eat, like, half. Not that you would eat half an 800 foot pound brownie. But how do you know how much to cut off? Like, do you just cut off, like, a little piece of a brownie square? And, like, how, how long is the brownie going to last? Like, does the weed expire? Does the, is the brownie going to go, like, stale? Like, is, at one point, does this just become useless product? Matt, you are digging way too deep. <laughs> you are digging no, way too I'm deep into the logically. story. You're not thinking logically. I <laughs> think this is just to cover that there was an 850-pound weed brownie made, and you're getting into, oh my gosh, how much can you actually eat? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, 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 my, my, I've never thought they were in my life. <laughs> are you on weed, Matt? Yeah, is that why? <laughs> no, I'm not. I can confirm. I'm not a drug guy. Um, no, this is it's a cool story. I, I'll, I'll say that. Um, props to these people, because... I wouldn't even want to think of the time and the effort it would take to make 850 pound brownie. Uh, mostly because I don't think I've ever made brownies myself. <laughs> so, Matt, I, I did read up that they, they actually applied to have the brownie considered as a Guinness World Record holder. Um, but the Guinness uh, responded that it, quote, no longer accepts applications or creates new record titles that are related to the consumption preparation or use of tobacco cannabis or nicotine products it's dumb yes very dumb 100 percent. Mm -hmm. and we're going to still talk about another dumb segment to conclude our first half of the funny business podcast uh matt curling my friend i think is one of the coolest winter olympic sports mm -hmm. out there curling i agree it's just it's the best finesse teamwork hard hard how it's made those little uh, rocks brooms <laughs> the, oh yeah the rocks yeah uh, whatever stones. they are stones. stones that's yep. what it is stones uh matt you know uh winter olympics is actually uh, approaching very quickly mm -hmm. yep, uh, big controversy so you know <laughs> yes a lot yes. of controversy. Oh, Correct. I thought <laughs> what we're talking about is a little controversial, but... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so, Matt, obviously people are qualifying for the Beijing Winter Olympics. And by that, uh, there usually is a couple sponsorships that come throughout here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, but Olympics, not really into sex toys after this article here. So... A Dutch sex toy company's attempt to reach fans uh, led to broadcasters to cancel their live stream of a tournament that will determine the final spots of the Beijing Olympics. Hmm. Local organizers of the Olympic qualification event in the Netherlands said they were told that, uh, quote, on ice ads with the, quote, easy toys name and non-explicit logo were too much for U.S. audiences. Dutch media reported that the live stream was also canceled in Japan. Well, 
So that's bullshit because they pass out how many condoms at the Olympic Village? I think I mean, last I think the last summer, Olympics but... each each no it's it's every Olympics. Okay. Yeah, I, I I'm pretty sure like the last summer Olympics they handed out like nine condoms per athlete. Now, so if they don't have a problem with that, this this seems a little hypocritical to me. Now I am just gonna go on and just absolutely just look at Easy Toys, which is on Twitter. Thank God. It's really not that bad of a logo. I'm going to look it up. Easy Toys? Easy Toys. Uh, so for those who are listening on the pod, um, it literally says Easy Toys. Easy is in cursive and green. Toys is spelled out in pink. And there's a heart that is kind of hugging the letter E in Easy. I, I, don't think, I, I don't think that that's very inappropriate. Um, I'm having some trouble finding it, I believe. Wow. A website. Is, this, is the header say better toys, greater joys? I think so. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think this is that bad. I don't, I'm looking I don't at the think right so one. either. No, I don't really, I don't understand. It's very classy. Oh. Yeah, I, I'm going to guess this is, this is the right website because they posted a meme. Um, it is Zendaya and Tom Holland. Are they together, I believe? Yeah. Uh, and it's Zendaya smiling, and it says me, and Tom Holland smiling. They're kind of like hugging, like holding each other. Yeah. And Tom Holland is my fave sex toy. <laughs> I think I found the right one. Yikes. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know. I don't see an issue with this. Well, even the, uh, uh wow, okay. Uh, NBC, uh, USA Curling tweeted on Sunday that video of the Americans opening round match was not available due to a quote unforeseen sponsorship conflict with local organizing committee. Uh, an NBC spokesperson did not immediately respond a question seeking an explanation for the decision. Easy Toys uh, that bills itself as the market leader in the Netherlands and Belgium were not able to comment. I, I Go ahead. I don't know what your thoughts are. I just think it's, I think it's, it's kind of stupid if you're going to hand out condoms to the Olympics, to the Olympic athletes. I understand maybe there's a younger audience, but then, you know, you're kind of promoting it within your own organization by giving out those condoms. So it's kind of a double standard. Like you can do it for the athletes, but you know, I, I don't know. I, I think that's, I think it's a hairy situation. It, it's not promoting I think it just goes with the whole quote taboo type of deal. Like no one is supposed to talk about sex. Like no one is supposed to talk about self gratification, self satisfaction, right? All those things. But and sex sells. Sex sells. It does. You're right. Uh, it would make a difference if I was thinking like, okay, maybe it's like uh, vape pens. Now, mm -hmm. like it's Olympic event, so it's athletes that are participating in the events smoking is bad period um why would we try to promote something that people are watching athletes participate in and like you were saying they get handed condoms every single year well sorry every four years at these olympic events and yet everybody knows about it because it's the most talked thing about in the olympic village yeah it's I, it's, I don't know. Like, I just don't get the whole, like, oh, like, there's, I don't see why there's a big, big deal. Um, I think, I think they just need to get over it in, in, in the, in the real sense of it, because it's just, it's part of life. And again, if you don't feel comfortable having it on the ice or on whatever, then you shouldn't have any association with anything sex related. Which also, I think, is an oversight on the planning committee. Because yeah, wouldn't you? I don't want to say research, but like, wouldn't something be approved per sponsorships or per mm -hmm. you know things that are going to be publicly seen on a broadcast? Mm -hmm. I I think it just it's a little upsetting, and it's a poor lack of planning. <laughs> Not surprised on any Olympic committee that's coming forward right now, but uh, yeah. It's it's kind of dumb, in my own opinion. They sh they should have just let it run, honestly. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, if you chose to have the event run there, then 
know the research and look into, hey, can we actually run the event here and not just, oh, that's convenient, let's just place it there. Like, you're, it's their own fault for this situation. Yeah, no, for sure. So uh, they haven't spoken of anything as far as any proceedings, like anything that's wrapping up. Uh, you know, they were said that we informed them which sponsors there are. We spoke with them about the position of the ads. He said, I can imagine they are surprised about the reaction, but not surprised about the sponsors we have. Just let, let it happen. Just, just let them, let them get a chance. Right. Like different countries have different values and some countries are open with this stuff. Like just because other countries aren't, doesn't mean like that sponsor should have to suffer from it. And the FCC can always blur it out. I mean, unless it's right, right on the target. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's it's not hard. <laughs> uh, so what? Matt, what what are you looking forward to for the the Winter Olympics? Sport wise, I mean, kind of what they do. Um, I think opening ceremonies overrated. <laughs> I'm kind of over them. I never understand them. Yeah. Um, I love curling. I love the the ski jumping. Uh, I love watching all skiing events. I can't ski or snowboard to save my life, <laughs> but they're cool. Um, I like the half pipe the skateboard tricks. Those are awesome. Snowboard. Shout out Flying Tomato. Uh, I like the Winter Olympics a lot. I do like the Summer Olympics better, I will say, but uh, I will still watch the Winter Olympics just because it's, you know, once every four years. What What's the, I want to call it a toboggan, but like, what is the, like the sled? Toboggan? It's like called the toboggan, but what is it called? Yeah, what is um, what is the Olympic toboggan oh, this is, event? This is great Olympics, great, great contact, contact everybody. <laughs> uh, the lug, no, luge. bobsled, bobsled, the L- bobs, bobsled and illusion, bobsled yes. illusion, luge, yes. the Louvre. <laughs> yes, no, it's fun. I I don't mind ice skating. I watch figure skating. I, I think it's kind of cool. I'll never forget the one time it was me, my mom, my brother, we were watching the figure skating finals and the last girl went and we were waiting the final score to see if she won gold. And as they're about to put the number on the screen, as they're talking about it, our power went out. <gasps> uh- yeah. Oh, we were so pissed. <laughs> we all were just like, no, like that did not just happen. It was, it was so funny. You know, the one movie that always comes to mind when I think of figure skating. Blades of Glory. Blades of Glory. Amen. <laughs> No one knows what it means. No. It's provocative. provocative. Gets the people going. going. <laughs> Great movie. I haven't watched that movie in forever. Same. It, it needs to be available somewhere where we can watch it. So. I agree. But we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, it's Matt's turn. Let's say you start a podcast or you're running your own side hustle and have a bunch of links that you want your audience to know about. As a podcast, Matt and I have all of our social media, all of our podcast links, and other important things. Make it easier for your followers to find your important links, social media, and latest content by having it all in one page with solo.to. I'll be honest, I have used similar websites like this, but nothing compares to solo.to. All of your links are clean and easy to navigate. Have an upcoming video? It's really easy to make those changes. Plus, solo.to has opportunities to upgrade to include more customization, advanced analytics, and so much more. Solo.to is giving us a special opportunity for you to get 10% off if you create an account and upgrade. Be sure to go to solo.to slash funnybusiness to create your account today. Solo.to, it's the way to go. Do you think, Matt, people are tired of hearing our Anchor ad? Yeah, probably. But let's be honest, if it wasn't for Anchor, we would not be doing a podcast. You're right, Matt. Once again, we have to thank Anchor for helping us continue to make each episode. Y'all know how it works. Anchor is free. It's easy to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer and distributes your podcast to platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. And you all know that you can make money too, even with the first couple episodes that you start with. So why haven't you started your own podcast yet? Anchor is everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app today or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm. So Mike, when do you think we'll stop talking about Anchor? Oh man, Matt. I, you know what? To be completely honest, I think we'll be talking about this for a long time. Okay, let's slide into sports topics we have for you all today. Uh, we're going to start off with a bit of an interesting discussion, I think. Um, 
you know, Mike, I see a lot of a lot of people online complaining about lately kickers in the NFL just missing kicks. Um, which you know, you brought up, I believe, last episode or a few episodes ago. There's cutting a clip for about you know uh, Ninja streamer Ninja complaining that how does an NFL kicker ever miss a kick because it's their job? Which in hindsight, yeah, sure, but it, it we all mess up at our jobs once in a while. Um, so kickers get a lot of heat. Um, you know, there's a lot of different players that get heat for things online or by their teammates and things like that. And it kind of got me wondering what what's like the worst position in sports to play, whether it's, you know, one where you can't make the most mistakes because people make fun of you or just because the position just sucks in general, uh, like like as a physical standpoint, something like that. Um, so obviously kickers is uh, being an NFL kicker is probably up there because you have one job. You have it one job. To make, <laughs> to make field goals and extra points. When you don't do that, everyone is going to complain about it because that's all you're on the team to do. Yeah. I mean, I think overall, any football player, if we think about post, post game, not post game, but like post career, like side effects, like you're either concussed you you know your 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 body is just functioning like depending on what position you play uh you know it's been beaten up pretty well uh but yeah i think a kicker that's the worst part you had one job and it the, the margin for error is 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 up there very slim uh another football one that i'll say or i don't know if you have any um i would say left tackle on okay. the offensive line um, I think all offensive line positions are hard just because it's a lot of pressure on the knees. But left tackles, with most quarterbacks in the league being right-handed, that's kind of their blind side. So you really have to have a, a really good left tackle so that your quarterback doesn't have to get hit every time and he's not going to know it. Um, and I do see a lot of times when there's a bad left tackle, they get dragged online left and right. Uh, and you can tell like the teammates get frustrated because the quarterback doesn't have time to throw. Uh, so that would probably be another football one that I have. I don't know if you have a comment to that or if you have another one you want to throw out. Uh, I'm going to talk about baseball. Okay. Um, a catcher mm-hmm. is the worst after your career. Mm-hmm. Um, your knees. <laughs> Knee surgery right there, baby. That's <laughs> um, Yeah, it's just... <laughs> You know, I say, oh, my knees are getting bad. I can only imagine what a catcher's knees is after a career. It's a little nuts. It's a little nuts. It, but it's so stressful on the knees. It's crazy. Like there's gotta, I, I know it's, I, it, there's gotta be a better way, but like th- we gotta have more inventions on how to to help the catcher's knees. I mean, I know there's like knee savers that some catchers wear. I don't know if they wear them in the pros, but like there's gotta be some sort of equipment we can come up with to help them a little bit. You know? Yeah, a little bit more. You know, I I want to switch kind of gears to flip over to softball okay uh third base yeah that's a good one because uh the amount of pole hitters that you're gonna have and the distance uh 60 feet between the hit and the third baseman i mean you're you're getting a softball like cracked at you uh and you know, I see many times the third baseman and the pitchers usually uh, wear a mask uh, when they pitch because, God forbid, that thing comes flying at your face. Like, your face is going to get screwed up if you're not wearing a mask. Yeah, I, I think that's a, that's a pretty good one. I never would have thought of that one because it is. They do come flying at you, and you really don't have much time. I also feel like um, I feel like softball, there's more stolen third bases than it is in baseball. But they also have that aspect of, like, having to cover third on a steal. Yep. which I think is is unique softball. Um, I'll throw one more out there. I don't know if you have any others. Uh, I will say goalie and hockey. Um, and I think it's mostly because, one, you have a puck flying at your face. Um, and yes, they have padding, but if it hits them, it's probably going to hurt. And also, similar to the, um, to the NFL kickers, and you could throw this in with soccer goalies too, you have one job is not let the puck or ball go in the goal. So when a goalie in soccer or hockey gives up a goal, they're going to get dragged because that's their job is to not do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think those are very difficult things. And it's things that I think 
us as sports fans, we need to realize that, yes, that is their job. However, it's not possible to stop every shot. Like, they're going to give up some goals. So as long as they can maintain it, you know, it's okay. It's okay once in a while to give up a goal. As long as it's not costing their team game after game after game. Yeah, I mean, even the best goalkeepers and goalies of, of NHL, MLS, the um, the Premier League, uh, it, it, there's there's a couple goals that go by them. And I think, I guess putting a hot take out there, I think goalies in both soccer and, and hockey have a little bit more responsibility than a kicker in the NFL. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because they kind of set the defense up. Yep, they set the defense yeah. out. They're the biggest communicators. Mm-hmm. Um, really, the the kicker comes out and is is kicking the ball. <laughs> yeah, I I think that's a fair point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, I I I don't necessarily have anything for basketball. Like, I I think everybody has their own responsibilities from the first man, you know, the, the guard to the center and then even on the bench too. I mean, playing the bench is the worst position to play in sports, period. Right. Uh, if I had to pick a basketball one, I think right now I'd pick center just because it seems like the position is kind of being like outdated. Modif- and like yeah, being a modified. center now, you not only have to maybe be able to shoot the ball from the outside, but you also have to be able to guard guards, like point guards, the small guys. Um and I think that's something nowadays that your center really has to be versatile. Like they have to be a Jokic or they have to be um, like a DeAndre Ayton or like a DeAndre Jordan kind of was. DeAndre Jordan can't shoot. But I think that whole position kind of adapted a lot more in the past 20 years. And I think it's made it probably the hardest position to play in the NBA. Well, yeah, you're seeing a lot of big men now bring up the ball in some mm-hmm. occasions. and. You know, back then we always look back the Shaquille O'Neal's, <laughs> you know, the Yao Ming's. Um, you know, sometimes they had very bright spots, but the rest of it was very dull spots. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, even those things like to be able to guard a point guard um, as a center, like you have to um, or else the sw- they're going to switch every single time and they're going to get a- an open for the point guard or the shooting mm-hmm. guard every single time. Um, it's very interesting to see. I I do have to say, we were watching, I believe, like the bridge between what centers used to be versus what centers now with Chris Bosh. Do you ever think about that? Yeah, I think he kind of started the whole. He was a part of that whole thing. Uh, now you could say he's more of a power forward center, but he played both, so he's in yep. that conversation. Um, and I, honestly, I think you can throw Dirk in there as well. Dirk oh, yeah. was probably the for the first big man. Now Dirk was more of a true power forward, but he's tall enough that he could play center. And you know he was this tall German guy that no one knew if he was going to work out the and in the NBA. Let alone he'd become one of the top twenty five players to ever exist. Um, so I think both of those guys really had a big impact on the NBA. That I think a lot of guys. I think Dirk gets more credit, but you're right, Chris Bosh. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. Like he deserves equally the same amount of credit. Because he came in the league when LeBron did, and he had a hell of a career. He did. And I think it's also more difficult now for centers just because, you know, usually if they would switch on a guard, the guard would just try to, like, blow right by them. But now the guard can either try to get by him or take a three. Yeah. Because the three-point shot has just become so influential in the NBA. Uh, Steph Curry is so close. I, I don't know how many threes he's away from the three-point record. Ten. from. Time I thought he was. I, I thought he was eight away before I thought, yesterday's game. Yeah, I thought they Hold lost. They, <laughs> they they did lose, but oh, he got two. On. We'll look it up. Maybe he um, just shot eight. Maybe he just shot eight while we're talking. Steph Curry three point. Here we go. This is again great, great content here, folks. Um. Anyway, so I'll find the number. I'll keep talking. So Steph Curry. Probably the not probably is the best three point shooter in the NBA by far, uh, probably in, in NBA history. You, you could argue Ray Allen maybe, um, but I think at this point we can all agree Steph Curry is the best shooter. And for a long time, it has been said that LeBron was the most influential player 
in the NBA in the last 20 years, which I think for a long time that was true. I have seen now, I believe Stephen A. Smith, who's just getting a ton of shout outs on this, this episode, <laughs> make the argument that Steph Curry is now the most influential player of this era, passing LeBron James. Which is a big statement to make. It is. And I can see by your face you disagree with Stephen A. Smith. And I would like to hear why. You know, I, I'd love to hear the how. I, I think his argument was because the NBA is now all about threes. Threes. And that was kind of Steph who really started that train. I mean, think about it. Steph is... Uh, when did he get drafted? 2009? So right. he's like barely 10 years in the league and he's already got the three-point record wrapped up pretty much. You know, and that's... Jeez. Oh, I want to, like, say yes, but, you know, here, here we go, hopping on the LeBron train. Like, the fact that LeBron has done a lot of things outside of the NBA and, you know, his own NBA record stats and, you know, all these extra things. Like, yeah, we'll, I think by the time LeBron is done with the league, I think we will, you know, I think Steph is going to be that... that you know, person number one that everybody has their eyes on. Um, I just find it very tough to say that that he's now more influential than LeBron. Well, if you talk about outside of basketball, yeah, it's LeBron. Uh, if you're talking about the actual the game of basketball, I kind of want to agree with Stephen A. Smith. So, you know, LeBron may have touched more people to play the sport of basketball. Right. But... What do kids want to do nowadays when they touch a basketball? Oh. Kobe. No. <laughs> they want to shoot threes. Steph has made the three-point shot not only fun, but he's made it practical in, in the sport. Like, it's now a thing where guys all across the league, you know, if you enter the NBA draft, the first thing they're going to talk about is, well, if you're a guard, is how can he shoot? Can he shoot from yep. the outside? Like, that wasn't talked about 10 years ago. You talked about... Could they play basketball? How'd they play defense? Could they develop a shot? Now, if you're a guard entering the league and you can't shoot, you're not even going to be like a top 10 pick. Like no team's going to take you in top 10 if you can't shoot the three. So I think, you know, LeBron maybe brought more people to the game of basketball, but when it comes to changing the sport itself and having an influence on the kids and on how they play the sport, I think you could probably lean towards Steph because what, what has LeBron like, done in a game that was influential like he shoots the three sometimes but there's no signature lebron move like if you think of lebron's game you think of everything so it's good to be an all-around player when you think of steph you think of the best three-point shooter of all time yeah i mean i if if i i think it's very generic of him saying who is like he's the most influential of the sport of basketball i think Steph is the most influential on a specific part of the game of basketball, which is three pointers. Um, you know, I always think more of the the pie, like the whole pie, rather than just a slice of it. Um, because you know, we we could we could say that Dennis Rod, <laughs> good old Rodman, <laughs> my fridge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jenna said Jenna said I should call him Dennis, and I said you know I said it's pretty interchangeable. You can call him Dennis. You can call him Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Right. We're just gonna call right. him Dennis. Dennis Rodman. is like, the <laughs> formal. Rodman's the informal. <laughs> um, you know, we could say Dennis Rodman is is the most influential when it came to rebounding, uh, and you know, putting up those weird, crazy stats that he had for. Um, wasn't he 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 had a one game. Where like he had zero points, but he, he had, had a like, crap ton of like rebounds, twenty six rebounds or something yeah. like that. Yeah, <laughs> like it was and, crazy. And you know, even when we we saw the last dance interview, like how he was able to read rebounds, like you could say, like yeah, like Dennis Rodman, most influential when it comes to rebounding. Uh, I'm trying to think, Chris Paul, most influential in playmaking uh, in the NBA. Like, I just mm -hmm. can't see Steph be this culmination of the game of basketball. Yes, has he changed how we score? Absolutely. But not overall, like, the game of basketball. But I think that is because, this, like, the game plans have just changed to shoot as many threes as you can. 
Like, like he did change the sport of basketball because now every team tries to get as many threes as they can, and there's guys that are strictly in the league just because they can shoot. Um, well, obviously, like, LeBron has had a big impact too, but there's no one thing that LeBron did that changed the way the game was played. Like, Steph has changed the way the game is played because of his threes, I think would be my argument against that. I guess I'm just very old-fashioned because I'm always about chipping away at the game. If you get score two, you can score two. If you can get fouled, you can make free throws. You know, you have the occasional three here and there, but, you know, if people are just going to keep shooting threes and, you know, you have one off night, then you're going to have to, like, if you're primarily a three-point shooting team, you would primarily, like, what happens if you guys weren't hitting that night? Now you would have to think something completely different of your style play because you're not having a hot night. Whereas, like, if you started fundamentally scoring twos, getting inside, being able to shoot mid-range jumpers, and then the occasional three, you have a wider, diverse playbook than just, okay, we're just going to get Steph the ball, or okay, we're going to set a triple screen so and get somebody open. Like, yeah. if, you know, Steph, Steph is a ridiculous shooter. We cannot disagree with that. Like, the man during warm-ups is, you, you can't, like, it, that, people come to the pregame earlier because they want to watch Steph. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about that for a little bit? What, his pregame? It's unnecessary. <laughs> it's so unnecessary at this point. I don't even care. It, yes, it's a cool shot. I don't like everyone. Bleacher Report always puts out like an alert, like on my phone. They're like, "Oh, look at this!" I don't care. He can't do that during the game. Get it off my phone. That like you're not playing horse. You're just warming up for a game by shooting from the tunnel. Okay, cool. Play for the Harlem Globetrotters if you want to shoot those types of shots. Right. Yes. Um. Yeah. I, you can't deny what they both done for the league. It's. But I think you can acknowledge that. You know, we can now acknowledge that Steph is up there with LeBron. I think a lot of people had struggled with that. And I think now that he's come back this season and they're seeing what he's doing, like, people used to say he's overrated. He's not overrated at all. He is one of the best players in NBA history. Now, here's my question. Mm -hmm. If it's LeBron, then Steph, or Steph, then LeBron, depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Who's number three? In this era? Yeah. Um... That's tough. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a tough one. I would have to say probably Kobe. Okay. Yeah. I I, I say- already put I already put Kobe in like Hall of Fame status. Like I mean currently. Oh, you mean currently playing? Currently playing. Got it. Got it. I think okay. yeah. I I automatically put you know God rest his soul. I automatically put. Kobe in that Hall of Fame bracket. Yeah. Um, hmm, that's tough. I don't know. Do you have anyone? I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll pull out of my book. You know, I want to think like Chris Paul as one, just influential with the game. Come on, Jake from State yeah. Farm. Like, <laughs> you, don't, Probably. you don't give it to anybody else. Um, Probably him. Um, I want to say KD, but I don't, I don't really think so. I think, it, hot take, I think he's just living in LeBron's shadow right now. Uh, I disagree with that. Okay. I, I think he's the greatest, the, the most, what's the word I'm looking at? The purest scorer in NBA history. He can, he can score from anywhere. Yeah. His jumper is just beautiful. Like he, he can, like he just pulls up from anywhere. He can pull up from like 40 feet and it looks like he's, he's normal. Like sometimes when Steph shoots a three, it looks like he's like jacks it up quick. Kevin Durant's shot is just silky smooth. But um, I think it's still talk. I think it's just still not the attention, but it's still. I don't want to call it even the drama, but that's that's the word I'm looking at. The drama of, you know, it's LeBron James. LeBron James. Like, I agree. I think I think he'd have to win a title or two going forward to kind of get out of that. But yeah, I I think I think you can make that argument. For yeah, sure. agreed. Yeah, for sure. Um, so that will conclude the sports topics we have for you all today. It is time for Say What? We're bringing it back. Say what, Mike? The floor is yours for your first one. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, this experience happened to me this past week. I'm going to just air it out. I'm calling okay. out everyone, every company who has a gift card. 
<laughs> so like so you're your calling Amazon, out every company in the world basically your amazon okay. gift cards your starbucks gift cards your duncan gift cards your roblox gift cards your minecraft gift cards uh yep. your google play gift cards yep i received a amazon gift card so grace 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 ishly wow graciously thank you words speech huh? get how out many? there how what syllables how many? graciously oh <laughs> no i was gonna say syllables <laughs> perks of i got perks but borso uh the perks of dating a speech major uh mm. <laughs> a speech person not a major anymore speech job slp right. job uh because right. she was making fun of me not being able to say general generously <laughs> i still can't even Put say some respect on her name respect on her name uh so matt you know like you get a gift card and on mm. the back you have to type in or you have to, you know, you have to write in the 12 digit code that's on the back of the card. Yep. Some companies now have a choice. You could either peel off mm. the gray mm -hmm. bar or you could scratch off the gray bar. Yep. Why have both when you could just have one? Well, it's funny because sometimes you'll go to peel it off and it peels off the numbers and you're like, well, what I do had, I do now? I had that exact thing happened to me with my amazon gift card i'm like you gotta be kidding me yeah. i was going through every single i mean now luckily i was able to make out the numbers i was able to get my gift card however that was a pain in the ass <laughs> and i was not scratching off because a it makes a mess you don't want to get it all over your table or wherever you were trying to your lap and mm -hmm. i peeled it off and i'm like you gotta be shitting me so <laughs> poor jen and i were trying to decipher those two two I'd say two code numbers or letters out of an entire code set. Two. Yeah. There's got to be a better way. Like the, it's 2021. Gift cards are like, I love getting gift cards for gifts. I love, you know, it's, it's a simple gift, but it's like, okay, I get to pick out what I want because there's, you know, I would rather, I'd rather get a gift card from someone than have them worry about if I'm going to like their gift or not. Right. That makes sense. Um, so yes, gift cards are great, but yes, either scratch it off or peel it off. And if you're going to make it peel it off, let's find some technology to make sure that it doesn't rip off the numbers because it shouldn't happen in this day and age. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Preach. Preach. Um, my first one. So last week I went to Wawa for lunch. Okay. I was getting a panini. Love Wawa paninis. Don't be a meanie. I was going through, picked my meat, got some honey roasted turkey. Ooh. Go to the cheese. They have a new cheese option. Fresh mozzarella. Nice. Fresh mozzarella is the best cheese, hands down. You cannot, you could can just eat it by itself. If you eat it with a, it's like a caprice, like put a little cherry tomato on it with like a um, basil leaf. Like fresh mozzarella is just phenomenal. It, it's mozzarella is good too, but like the mozzarella, when you just squeeze it and the little milk runs out of it, chef's kiss. I mean, it's, kiss. it's phenomenal. Like every. I will never turn down a time to eat some fresh mozzarella. Never. And the fact that Wawa has it now, game changer. So what's your grievance? <laughs> no, it's just say what? It's just that fresh mozzarella is the best oh. cheese. Did you forget <laughs> what like, this segment was? Wait, I thought this was the safe space. <laughs> no, just say what? So, you can just say whatever you want. Say whatever you want. Yes, uh -huh. correct. Yeah. It it's a safe more... space for people that think that I'm wrong, which I'm not. But yeah, I think mozzarella is is a pretty go to cheese when it comes to just mm -hmm. anything. Like it's the best pizza cheese, hands down. Mm -hmm. Cheddar's also good too. For certain things, I I, certain I would things. prefer cheddar on a burger over mozzarella. Mm. Oh, dude, I had. Uh, such a good burger we went out to um lunch for my birthday uh and i can't even tell i was just like in heaven like <laughs> uh they call it the og burger um and i gotta i gotta pull it up for you because it's just it's oh, so I, good I dude a, a good burger like that haven't we talked yeah. we talked about this on the podcast like having a really nice gourmet hamburger is just like the shit I used to get burgers a lot when I when I went out to restaurants. I haven't lately, unless I go to Red Robin. Like you have to get a, a burger yep. at Red Robin. Red Robin's the best. Um, 
Mabel and I went back to Red Robin a few weeks ago. Still don't have the Red Robin seasoning on the table, and I'm still pissed about it. Um, but maybe I'll get over it one day. Is that was that your go? Was that your date lunch? First date lunch? First date dinner? We did go to Red Robin for our first date. That is correct. There you go, man. Yeah, that was long, not a long time ago. Months ago. So, so the burger that I had at this wonderful establishment was an eight ounce of custom blended certified Angus beef, Cooper cheese candied onion, lettuce, tomato, red onion, pickles, and a secret sauce. That does sound pretty good. Oh, so good. I've never had Cooper cheese. And a side of mac and cheese, too, on top of that. I oh, damn. was living. <laughs> I would imagine. And a pomegranate refresher, too. It's a nice oh, pink that's, drink. That's bizarre. Oh, but it no, sounds it good. so good. It was so good. That man. sounds it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Mozzarella. Mozzarella, best cheese. Happy for you, Matt. Thank you. Matt, my second one. Yep. Go off, King. <laughs> I am getting disgusted, sick, and tired. This is blasphemy of the amount of people, and it may sound weird at first, that are talking about Spider Man No Way Home on just any social media platform. I haven't seen a lot of my timeline just because I don't follow a lot of people re- relating it. Um, but I have seen some things that it, it, some people are, they're getting excited for it. They are like, it's, it's like the PlayStation five coming out on black Friday. Like, but people are, are just taking information and they're just like, they're not even saying like, Oh, this is what I'm predicting. Like they're just saying, this is what's happening. Like the biggest thing that's going on, Matt, and, and I'm sure we've we've talked about this. Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, and Tom Holland are all uh, the three Spider-Mans of the entire since 2002, because there's been three renditions of it, are supposed to be coming together in this film. Now, with the film at the moment, it makes sense as to why they're coming back, because we already saw Alfred Molina, who played as Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man 2 back in 2005, come back. Uh, gosh, I forgot his name. Green Goblin, William Defoe. Mm-hmm. He was in the original Spider-Man 2002, and then somebody else who played Electro, I forget his name, um, he played in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So, and then Sandman, who played in Spider-Man 3. So, it makes sense. And then there's this one scene in particular that Tom Holland Spider-Man's going after Lizard, Electro, Electro and Sandman. And there's one last second frame where Lizard's face moves to the right as if it was getting punched. No one is there to punch him. And everybody's like, oh my god, they edited out the other two Spider-Man. Like, shut up. Go to the movie. Watch the movie. React to the movie. Don't spoil it for the rest of us while you're there too. Because I'm Mm -hmm. trying to figure out whether we can go. I'm trying to not go on TikTok on starting this friday because i don't want it to be freaking spoiled um or just on social media period so i'm just like oh please just stop Stop. don't be that person don't be that person and now i'm starting to realize now how endgame was for everyone back when it was back when it was in theaters Mm -hmm. like people like because i didn't necessarily like marvel at the time but like i can imagine why people were getting so pissed off with that end scene in endgame because nobody wanted to know about it because they haven't seen it in theaters yet Mm -hmm. so and no one likes anyone that spoils a movie online you're just a loser and you should be banned from movie theaters that should be a rule if you spoil a movie on twitter or facebook or tiktok or instagram you should not be allowed to a movie theater for another year. Report them. <laughs> yes. A 365-day ban. Um, yeah, people do just need to... I, I understand, like, people want to know. But I was never big into, like, reading, like, theories on movies or, like, reading of what people, other people think are going to happen. Because I just... I want to go in not knowing anything. Not, not thinking, like... I might have my own thoughts on what's going to happen if it's, like, a sequel or a trilogy. But, like, I'd rather just go in and be, like... Okay, this is what I think is going to happen. Not, well, I read this story, so if I see that part of the storyline, that means that's true. Or if this happens, that means that's true. Just watch, enjoy the movie. Like, it's going to make it that much better if you just go in with a clean slate. Because everybody is also getting, like, 
and here's another thing that really upset me. Um, so Andrew Garfield, um, obviously played in the Amazing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man Two, uh, with I almost called her Gwen Stacy, Emma Stone. <laughs> uh, with Andrew Garfield, he also got a movie on Netflix called Tick Tick Boom, mm -hmm. and he had a press tour. He was getting all these late night appearances. He was getting all these morning show appearances. And the thing they kept asking him is, are you in Spider-Man No Way Home? While he wasn't even promoting Spider-Man No Way Home, he was, trying to he was trying to promote Tick, Tick, Boom. And yet the journalists and commentators were like, oh, are you in Spider-Man No Way Home? And it's like, talk about the movie he's there to promote because he's probably more prouder of that because he's the main character, rather than being a side character in Spider-Man No Way Home. Right, it's just rude at that point. It's freaking rude. Yeah. Um, I do have to say, out of all three Mary Janes, besides Gwen Stacy as the middle one in The Amazing Spider-Man, the original Mary Jane, my heart always belongs to her. She's the best. Tobey Maguire, she's the best. Correct, yeah, absolutely. Um, my final one. So, I had a bit of a road trip this past weekend. Uh, April and I went to Hershey Park. Uh, it was my first time in Hershey Park. Really? Yes, I've never been to Hershey Park before. Oh my god, you ever told me? I, that? I was I was never a big amusement park person. <gasps> Mostly because I did not like roller coasters. I would like to report I now love roller coasters. Whee! Love them, absolutely love them. So yeah, it was it was crazy. <laughs> so we got there and we did a few things first. We did. Uh, Chocolate World, which was really cool. Uh, we did Stable. Zoo of America, which was awesome. And then she she wanted to get me on some rides. I was like, whatever, like I'll I'll try it. Like I'm not gonna, mom and raise no bitch. What'd you What'd you get on first? We did Super Duper Looper. Yes, I told you. <laughs> that was my least favorite. Well, yeah, because that that's just what gets you warmed up for the other loop de loops and swips and whips and all that. Yeah, it was it was good. So then the second one we went on. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> the second one we went on is a new one it's called Candy Candy Mania, Candymonium, Candymonium, Candy Mo one? like Candyland kind of. Yeah, kind of. It's okay. more like it looks Hershey. like a chocolate bar thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. So April was has never been on it. She's like, let's just go. It says a half hour wait. So we walk over. Literally walked right on the roller coaster. Did not even wait a half hour. Oh wow! Like, I, we have no idea what this is about. We start to go straight. And Mike, I'm not kidding. We are going like straight up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just looking up. My head is down. I feel like my whole back is, is looking straight up to God in heaven. And April turns and looks at me and goes, I may have made a mistake. <laughs> Mike, the roller coaster started with 220 foot drop. Nice. <laughs> it was insane. I never screamed so much in my life. April did not open her eyes the entire ride. <laughs> it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. Uh, and then we went on another one called Wildcat, which that was like an 80 foot yep. drop. And I was like, listen, I'm a pro at this now. Like 80 <laughs> foot is nothing. Did a few other rides. And yeah, I now love roller coasters. Ah, uh, welcome to the club, man. Yeah. No, it was I'm awesome. Glad. I wasn't even like, I wasn't even nervous going on Super Duper Looper the first time, which I was surprised at because I thought it was going to be. So yeah, I'm a man. I now love roller coasters. I, I am a man. Man, <laughs> uh, I'm forty. I'm forty. I, I remember when I was. It was eighth grade when um, I had a group of friends. It was our eighth grade class field trip to Hershey Park, uh, and one of my classmates was like, "Oh, we'll go on the Super Duper Looper." Like they were so accommodating because I've never been on roller coasters, and a few of the other friends were, and we're like, "Oh, let's just do Super Duper Looper." Like it gets you at least like in the mood and like how to actually ride a roller coaster that's not just a ride per se like it does the loops and the flips and all that mm -hmm. and our friend was like make sure you like you lean back like make sure your head is all the way back like you're actually your back is up against the the seat because you don't want it to hit it as soon as you go back like mm -hmm. super accommodating and then we were just gung-ho all the rest of the way which i wasn't a big fan of the loop i think that was my least favorite part um, I will say Candymonium was fun. However, there was like four different times where my, your ass got lifted off the seat. 
Oh, like, that legit. That, that was a little me. scary. Yeah, that I didn't me. love that part. Um, but everything else was like going down. Like I screamed so much on the 224 drop. But after I came back up, I was like, okay, that was kind of cool. Like at that moment, it clicked that like I love roller coasters. Oh wow! I'm just I'm looking at the drop. <laughs> it is in, uh, the, when you go drop. It's like a zero degree angle straight down, dude. It was insane. <laughs> It, it, that, uh, I will never forget the feeling of just looking up to the sky and yeah. the heavens in the sky, and I'm like, I, I might not survive this roller coaster. What? Uh, now I see a bad. I see a better picture now. Oh my god! It, it's insane, dude. Insane. <laughs> we had no idea. We didn't look any information about it up. She's just like, it's new. You want to do it? I was like, yeah, why not? And uh, that's yeah. where we went. How how tall are you now? Like on the on the Hershey scale? Five nine. Oh, I don't remember which one. You don't remember what it was? No, I didn't wasn't check. It like fair, jolly, wasn't it like a Jolly Rancher? I, I, I think that sounds about right. Yeah. Dude, I was but so Hirsch excited. Park was awesome, too. I was so excited because, obviously, a Reese's Cup was my favorite Hershey's chocolate. And uh, I, we went there for the very first time. It was the size of a Reese's Cup. And I was so excited. And the, the Reese's Cup, the, like the, the Reese's Bar was there. And I took a picture mm-hmm. with them. When it's like, yes. <laughs> Uh, the best part of the whole trip, so we were getting some photos from the Photoshop, just like seeing what we, so the way we had taken, because we had one of the guys take our photo. We're walking out, and we see a basket of cookies. I'm like, mm. could, could mess up some cookies right now. Um, we got like 40 cookies for 13 bucks. Oh, wow. Oh, dude, it's insane. They were phenomenal. Literally, we ordered the, the basket of cookies. The guy pulls the tray out of the oven and oh, just unloads all of them into the my bucket. I was God. like, holy shit. We need some milk. Phenomenal. Yeah, we did not have any milk with them. Oh. They were, Mike, t- chef's kiss. Phenomenal. Oh, and it was probably oh, was, made with like Hershey's so chocolate. Well, of course they were. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Uh, the hot chocolate was good too. It was a great, uh, Hershey Park was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was also the whole week looked like it was going to rain all day. It literally didn't rain all day, except we went to leave, and it rained a little bit, and it was super oh. windy, so it seemed like it was raining a lot. Okay. It was a great day. I'm so happy you had good weather. Yes. Yeah. I was actually uh, we were, thinking I was about really you on worried. Saturday. I was really worried. We <laughs> literally got to do everything before it started to rain. Oh, dude, that's, that's amazing. Good for uh, you, it was, man. It was awesome. I'm glad you're now a man. Yes. Well, more of a man than I already was. Yes. Let's get down to bit. Oh wait, that's that's a different. That's Disney World. That's your next stop, <laughs> right? To defeat. Which I will be going to Disney World soon. When? In April. In April. Yeah, for With April? a long weekend. Yes. Yeah. You're you're going Saturday Sunday in April. No, no. We're oh, making, you like, said a long, long weekend of it. Okay, I was like long weekend. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. No, that's gonna be a fun time. First time down at Disney? I've been once before. I went not on the roller coasters. Uh, I did a few roller coasters. Uh, I did do Space Mountain. Uh, I don't know why my parents thought it would be a good idea to put me on Space Mountain as a kid who hates roller coasters. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> I'm ready to conquer it. Dark. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, it was not. It was not good. I cried the whole time. Uh, but now I'm now looking forward to doing Disney a lot more, uh, more after this experience. Oh, man. Dude, I, I'm happy for you. Good for you, man. Thank you. Good for you. And that concludes another edition of Say What? And that concludes, of course, another episode of the Funny Business Podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe on the YouTube page if you're watching this from YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube out there. Yo, the dad wave. Um, Make sure you are following us on our social media. You can find all thy social media at solo.to slash funny business slash funny business not two extra slashes it's just Mm-mm. solo.to like t-o slash funny business mm. mr matthew yep advice yep conquer your fears <laughs> do it if you're afraid of something just, just go out and do it just uh, whether it's do a it. roller coaster <laughs> um i don't know any type of riding, like a plane or um, like a motorcycle. I don't know. Asking um, for that promotion that you've always wanted. 
at your right. job. Asking for a raise if you're doing a really good job. Yep. Any fear you have. Spiders. Kill a spider. Kill it. Um, burn it. Don't burn it, though. Right. <laughs> well, don't burn the house down. Yep. Um, it'd be like Trevor Abney and just use a lighter and burn the fly. Um, that was still a wild time. But yeah, conquer your fears. Anything you're afraid of, you can do it. Uh, me and Mike believe in you. Uh, if you ever need a pep talk, Mike's cell phone number is... And he'll help you out. <laughs> yes. Conquer your fears, everybody. And just make sure you get all your Christmas shopping done, because it's we're getting to the point now where it's getting a little close. Yeah, Too don't close remind for comfort. Me. You're welcome, Matt. <laughs> I, I'm getting there. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> Part of the process. Part of the process. Do you believe Christmas is a week away? No. <laughs> it's insane. Oh, boy. And we got bunch of great presents for all of you coming up in the new year mm -hmm. we're so excited um, so. i can't wait oh me too man and until the next time see you all in the next episode stay safe everyone